previously on Project IGI. I've been working on the road all this long time. Everybody now works on the road. That's the first time I've died. I'm a message hopper crew as you requested. 0500 was damn early. Where are we heading? You told me nothing. What about the bomb? What about Eck? Eck used an old KGB redoubt as a training camp. That's where she would have taken the bomb. Her camp is located in the ruins of a castle. The castle is perched up on a rocky outcrop about 50 k's from your present position. Access is restricted to cable car only. I can't risk you and the chopper going in close. A shoulder launched SAM could bring me down too easily. Access to the cable car is located in a regular army training fort, located at the base of the mountain. We will drop you some distance away. A weapons cache has been prepared for you. One of Harrison's men left it for you. Collect the weapons cache. Proceed to the training fort. Ride the cable car up to the peak of the mountain. David, I've managed to access building plans for the fort. My man in Moscow came up trumps. The cable car has its own independent power supply. The power supply is off. I've checked. Locate the generator. Hello and welcome back to Project IGI where I am dreaming of a white Christmas. In front of us down the hill we've got a base with a lot of man roaming around. And behind that we've got a, an even bigger base. Okay, and oh, up there we've got yet another base. Well, we've really got our work cut out for us. Let's check out the objectives. Difficult to see. Where's the button? There it is. When we're on a snow level, the map's so green it's hard to make out the green text. Right, so objective number one is we have to locate a sniper rifle, I guess. That's the package that Harsh. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Click on a little icon and it takes you to the objective on the map. Neato. Oh, as I was saying, objective number one is to get the sniper rifle. I'm guessing that's the weapons cache that Harson's man has left for us. Now we're off to the second base for objective two. We have to uh, enable the power for the cable car. After that, we leg it up to base number three, get in the car, and presumably get on to the next level. Now well, let's get on with the job at hand. Check the weapons we've got. got good old Glock and MP5, good. And a grenade. Well, it's, it's not a wide mix, but I'm always happy to have the MP5. Let's take another look at this small compound. It's got a, quite a lot of guys in that main courtyard, I think. Really, we want to be avoiding that. Got a guy in the watchtower too. And if my eyes aren't deceiving me, it looks like there's an alarm button down there as well. Well, might as well get stuck in. So off we go. Make our way down to this corner and it seems to be fairly unprotected over here. Take a look at the map, we can have a peek about to see if we can find perhaps another approach. The building at this compound is a familiar one, it's the bombed out one which has a corner missing. And if we check that out we can see that there's some scaffolding there and the telltale signs of a ladder. So perhaps it might be best if we go around the back. At least that way it looks like we'll avoid all the people in the- oh, excuse me a moment. I know there's a guy up there, I can see him walking about. And of course, we're still going to look and see what happens if we do go around the front. There's one guy in particular we need to kill, and it's this guy at my crosshairs. As soon as he sees us, he runs for the alarm, so we have to take him out first. <laughs> Fortunately, that means that there's a little bit of time when about four or five guys are all shooting at us. Here's another tech where we don't shoot the guy who's running for the alarm. The difficulty appears to be ramping up a little bit. The guys have seemed to be a little bit more accurate. We've lost half our health already. Making our way into the compound, we've got guys scattered around these ruined buildings. Not sure what this place was meant to be, but it's all a bit of a mess now. There's a zip line up there. Ha! 
one thing about the alarm is that when it's set off, it doesn't actually spawn any extra guys. The only thing it does is alert everyone at once, and anyone who isn't fixed in one position will all come running at us. So, we've killed everyone outside. There's a few guys in the window. If we make our way inside, that's pretty much our goal. just make a cut here and I'll show you another run of um, getting in actually quite well. It's not terribly difficult to pull off, it's just you have to be very careful and sometimes pretty lucky. For some reason here the guys have a real tough time shooting through the fence. I'm not sure if the bullets are being stopped or just, I don't know, made weaker or something but they, they seem to be doing much to me. Usually you would see the tracer graphics going through the fence or something, but there's nothing there. It just looks like the bullets aren't penetrating. They are, of course. I've cut out the bit where I actually get destroyed, but yeah. For some reason, that one particular moment seemed pretty weird. So we'll go back to our main run and try and get in quietly. Softly, softly. Damn it! And in spite of that, our copper is still not blowing. Let's take a look at this zip line and see if we can put this to any good use. From the bat, things go very badly. <coughs> and just get worse. Not a viable route to tech. Let's take another look and always be careful not to drop off too early. approach the end of the wall here and get closer to the building, there's an open window with a soldier looking out. What's annoying is that when he takes a shot at you, he takes a step back and it's hard to tell whether or not you've killed him. So just to make sure and maybe take out some other guys, I usually chuck the grenade in. If I was any good at aiming that was. Let's see that done properly. And someone gets quite a fright. Seems our shitty aim has alerted somebody. Not to matter, it's only one person. Follow the building around to the gap. We'll just clear out this guy who's patrolling around the opposite side of the base. I peek inside, there's no one on the ground floor. Let's climb the ladder and see if the coast is clear. Nope. No, we're not going that way. Well, let's go in the ground floor and thanks to the holes in the, the ceiling we can see some people through and shoot them from here. Oh shit. Usually when you go into the crack in the wall there's a guy standing there but we had alerted him by the grenade that time. Here's something that's fairly interesting. If we throw the grenade inside, no matter where it goes, it will usually get the attention of people. Why? While it won't always alert them and get them uh, running around and chasing you, they'll usually be looking at it, but only for a short period of time. Now, this is weird. It would be cool if guards got set off by all their alerted guards in close proximity. It'd be a cool chain reaction, but who knows if that's what actually happened. A bunch of stuff we can pick up, grenades and shotgun things. If we check the objectives we see that that isn't the cache we're looking for. Obviously we're looking for a sniper rifle so we've still got some exploring to do. Huh. Nothing to be found on the ground floor. Fuck. 
including the guy at the window, there are four guys that hang around up here. You can pretty much be guaranteed that at least one of them is going to be looking at you, and as soon as he shoots, everyone starts shooting. Let's take a look for this cache and- oh, there's someone coming. Whenever you kill someone on the stairs, once their death animation finishes, they disappear. Presume that they clip to the ground floor for whatever reason, but yeah, they disappear. Back to the map again, and there's nothing on the second floor. If we take a look at the map and see if we can get a hint about this cache, you can see that the sniper rifle is actually on the roof. It's on top of a chimney stack, which is a bit weird since there's no fireplace anywhere. Got some boxes here, we're obviously meant to climb those and get on top of the roof. Shit. The jumping in this game, I'm sure I've said it before, is very floaty and difficult to control. Fuck off, I am busy! Shite! Finally! Okay, let's see if we can do this silently. We'll make our way from the start, peg it all the way around here. We're going to avoid most of the base and try and sneak in from behind and, uh, as I said, do it silently. Come up over the ridge and use this building as cover. It allows us to get closer without being seen. Turn the corner and stab this guy. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Get up here either. Uh, there. There's another run of that. We've managed to get up here without being seen. You can kind of lean, glitch our way through the wall and see those two. For them, and we seem to be pretty much okay. In this room, you really don't want to get near the windows. There's a couple of guys who always patrol up and down directly in front of the door. Can't see us through the wooden boards. If we shoot them low, they're alerted and they come running. What? Where did you come from? Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! And here we have a gentle reminder that just because there's a wall between you and the grenade doesn't mean it can't still hurt you. Oh, that hurt quite a bit. This guy's having a fun time. He's not only dying, he's levitating. He's got a very long death animation here. It's one I like to stab people in. Uh, when that finishes, he'll snap to the ground beside his dead friend here. Uh, really, seriously, someone set off the alarm. It's a bit late, don't you think? Nearly one's dead. I'll go and sort you out as well. So they set off the alarm and went back to their posts. Nice. Just drop a grenade here. Ah, look at them run. Guy in particular. Run, run, run. Oh, they're over. Going back to something that was mentioned in the thread. If we throw a grenade... Oh, no, hold on a minute. Anyway, if you throw... It's turning into a shambles. Got it. Fed up. Right, just make sure there's not going to be any more interruptions. Okay, so, uh, not much. If you throw a grenade at some boards, you can blow them all up in one go. And it's fancy. Alright, you want some too, do you? Uh, uh, there we go. And yes, you, you just go set off that alarm. There's no one else left. Everyone's dead. Right, we're finally done with this compound. We can get out of here. We've got a line here coming from the communications array all the way down to that power pylon. 
And over here we've got the Dragonoff itself. Grab that, and Anya tells us to proceed down to the next big base and, um, I don't know, switch on the power. Got a lot of guys there. Check out the pylons as well. See, we've got a guy to take out before we even think about sliding down. We'll give a last brief look over the rooftop. Oh, shit, this guy since he spotted us. Okay, job done. Take out the guy on the pylon. Right, onward bound! <gasps> we There's a guy hanging out at the bottom of the pylon. We can we can actually safely just leave him there and not have to worry about him, but since he's there, we must have pop him in the face. We don't even need to go down the pylons, we can walk down the mountainside if we really wanted to. But um, I, I enjoy the ride. We... Look how nice that is. We... Second verse, same as the first. Right, um... See the base from here, it looks quite expansive. Oh, we can't no, we can't slide down the rest of the way. Oh. Oh well. We Okie doke, time to take a look at this base and see what we're up against. When we get here, we're right at the front entrance, it's just down there on the left. If we take a look at the map, we can have a bit of a closer look at the objectives and try and plan our way inside. Right next to the big number two is... Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, right next to the number two is our objective. It's this shaded area here. And there's only one way inside this particular part, and we have to go through this bunker entrance here. We zoom in a bit closer, you can see that there's a gate that leads into the area, but it's actually one way. We can only unlock it from a button on this side. Uh, to make things a little bit more difficult when we get there, we've got two cameras here, which are looking at each other. Makes it particularly difficult to do anything, so we have to disable those cameras before we get there. But obviously to get this far, we have to get into the bunker in the first place, and the entrance to that is right down here. Looking here, it seems that the entrance to the bunker is right next to the front entrance of the base and appears to be heavily guarded. We can go in this way or we can make use of this watchtower off in the corner and that provides us with a slightly different way to get inside. We can travel up and over the fence here or indeed over here but the problem with that is is that's going to take us across in this direction towards the bunker and that takes us in front of this heavily armed bunker. That's something you mostly want to try to avoid. If you wanted to, you could head up and behind the bunker, but as I'd said, the gate is locked from that side, so you can't get into the power generator area that way. Well, it looks like we're going in the front way. We've got a guy here, but uh, he's covered by a camera, and that's probably the biggest thing that will catch you here. There are a bunch of guys just kind of spread around, but as I'd said, that one particular camera is the main hitching point. brief look around the middle shows that we've got two guys in the bunker and another guy patrolling the watchtower above that. So yeah, another reason to avoid the middle. Everybody's fairly well spread out, it's not likely that they're going to see each other getting killed. First victim ought to be the camera, so we'll snipe that first and then just go about taking out everyone else that we can. Since we have the sniper rifle, it makes it a little bit more straightforward. There are more guys around here than we have sniper ammo for, so we need to be pretty selective about who we kill. There are some that we can just leave and actually not worry about at all. Okay, that's enough for now. If we wanted to, we could actually complete this second compound without killing a single other person. But why would we do that? There's loads of people to kill. Quick stop off at the checkpoint, we've got some ammo in here for the M16 we don't have. 
and off into the base. Ammo bunkers ahead of us, and that other bunker over there. We zoom in just to see what's ahead of us, and again, why we're not going that way. Okay, so what would we do if we didn't have a sniper rifle? Well, we just have to do the frontal assault up close and personal. Of course, by that I mean just sort of hiding, sniping people and taking it fairly easily. Not really all that difficult. It's certainly not something you want to run into, but it's really not much of a problem. The only really interesting thing to point out here is the guy in the checkpoint. Whenever I shot near him, he jumped onto the floor and that took him outside the checkpoint. So when he stood back up, he had to run back inside again and just clip through the wall. <laughs> What we really find in this level in particular, this is really, well maybe the previous level, but this one for me in particular, is where um, difficulty really starts to ramp up. The enemies seem to shoot with a little bit more precision and seem to do a little bit more damage on top of that. But the main challenge is that in this level at least there's no medical syringe and if you take any damage it has to do you for the length of the entire level. And because there's three bases to get through, it's it really can take its toll and even in this run, whenever I get to the end you'll see how much health I've got left. And, even it was a bit of a struggle and I managed to do very well. If anything from this point, it seems that the game becomes more a war of attrition than anything else. And in circumstances like that, the sniper rifle really is your best friend. Here we're gonna just run through going off the side entrance. Have a look over here, we can see the ladder down the other side, so that's where we need to go. Up inside, up and around. Way. See the fence over there that we can get over. We'll go this way first. Get up this guy, and then around the corner is the other fence, but we don't want to be going over that because that opens us up directly in front of the heavy bunker. thing we can do is from the top of the watchtower of the guy we just killed we can jump onto the warehouse roof. That gives us a, a bit of a look around it's just it's somewhere obviously you're not meant to go and it, it doesn't really give us anything special but it's nice to have a, a different viewpoint of things. The most useless camera in the world. Really there's it's very, very rarely that you'll actually come over this way, and that camera's in not a very good place, it can't really see you very well. Back to this again. And get to this fence. Don't want to pop out just yet, because there is one guy patrolling back and forwards. Just want to wait until we take care of him. He's gone. We, we can't. This has kind of confused me the first time I played this. I didn't think you could climb this fence because this side of it, the left side, you can't climb. You can only climb the right hand side of the fence. So that kind of tricked me a little bit. But over we go and take a look around. Taking a stroll over to this loading bay area where the guy was patrolling, we can get spotted by a guy in one of the rear buildings of the base. That particular building, we'll, we'll see more of that later on, but for now we just need to know that there's a guy there. There's not really anything else going on, so we'll speed that up until we get to the warehouse. And inside the warehouse itself we've got two tanks. Luckily they're very friendly tanks and they don't actually attack us. We can jump around and frolic with them all we like, but we're pretty much okay. In the corner is the other entrance into the warehouse, a bunch of boxes and such, but the door itself doesn't open, and if we try the door from the other side, it, it, it just doesn't open at all, it's very weird. What's odd about that is that if you come over the other fence into this particular area, you can't escape the heavy bunker by running into the warehouse because the door just doesn't open. It's a bit of a nasty trick. 
Across the recycling bin over there, we can see the bunker, and it's quite, it's got quite a beat on it. Let's just jump ahead to a point where we've already killed both guys inside, and we'll make our way to the front of the base. Once again, the door doesn't open from this side. What you basically find coming in the side entrance is that you ultimately have to kill more people than you would coming in through the front doors, because you still have to go in through the front of the bunker and most of the guys are going to be looking at you. Back once again to the main run and let's get inside the bunker. Hack through this pretty quickly and the door slowly rolls open. We're not ready to go quite yet, we still have to find a way to disable the cameras, and luckily enough, that is right over here. And we just saunter in, make sure there's no one around, and then get rid of that. But two minutes this time, and that's not a lot of time, so we can't linger too long. Thankfully the bunker has no one inside, we don't have to wrestle with anyone to get our way through. We do, however, some goodies that we can pick up. We'll nip over and get the first one, which is an M16 and a bunch of grenade rounds. Over in the other room, we've got a bunch of grenades, but for some reason I didn't bother to pick them up in this run. Here's the proof that they actually exist, and I'm not a dirty fibbing liar. But for whatever reason, I just ignored them, which I'm not surprised, because where the hell am I going to use them? Oh, we just move on through and up the ladder. Now that we're finally in this area, we can have a look at these cameras. Assuming that I hadn't disabled the cameras at this point, take a look out and you squint very hard, you can see that the light on the camera turns red as soon as we step out the door. It's got an absolutely gigantic range on it. And what you'd think would be luckily, there's a fenced off area just across the way. Dash under the watchtower and get into that. Follow it all the way to the end. And then we can sort of see the cameras from there. We can see the other camera around the corner. Oh, and it can see us too. But from here, there's nowhere else to go. We can't, we, there's no exit to it. And it seems to be extremely pointless. <gasps> and another example, we're gonna go from the front of the bunker and we're gonna nip across the heavy bunkered area and around the back. We're gonna take a look at the cameras from the other direction. <laughs> Well, that's one way to do it. Once again, we'll skip past actually killing them. As it gives a chance to point out that the gate can indeed only be open from one side. You can see the switch there on the other side of the fence pointing away from us. And there's a guy patrolling around too. That doesn't help things either. If we get too close and he sees us, and uh, we kill him in front of the cameras, then the alarm will get set off. So we don't want to really be doing that. And once again, and with an example, if we shoot one of the cameras, then the other one is just going to see it. And then the alarm goes off. But in the main run, we have disabled the camera, so it's really not much of a problem. Step out here, and you can see the camera's disabled, and we've only got the guy to worry about. We'll stealthily make our way up and blast him in the eyes. Job done. And we'll take out the cameras since uh, time is still ticking down, and they will be coming back on. Here we've got the gate through to the rear area of the compound, but we're not going to open it just yet. Here's an example of one way to get in from the opposite side. Here we've disabled the cameras, but rather than retrace our steps and go all the way back around again, we get the guy's attention and then go hide somewhere. And eventually he'll come and open the gate for us. Time to get into the power generator room, but before we do, we look off at this barracks, we can see through the window we've got a Spetsnaz guy in there, he's there with two other buddies. If we go for the door, more often than not they'll see us and start coming out. Stop. That's the reason why I didn't open the gate, because it means that they will delay for a second and not shoot or, or anything like that, they'll stay in that waiting state until the gate's all the way open. That means I can take advantage of that and shoot them in the head. If 
Race is over, off we go. We can see the generators here, they're very quiet. Check the mission objectives. We've yet, yeah, yeah, we've got to switch this thing on. Um, when we do that, that's it. Fortunately, the generators don't actually sound like they've come on, but apparently they have. At that point, Anya chimes in to tell us that we're all done in this base and we can move on to the third compound and get into the cable car and leave. While we're making our way out, I can point out one interesting thing about the objectives and that you can do them out of order, at least on this particular level. Check the objectives here, we've gotten all the way down to the generator room without getting the sniper rifle. Check the objectives, and yes, only objective 2 is complete. After that, we leg it all the way back up to the first base. Get up to the top where the sniper rifle is, and then grab that. At that point, Anya tells us that we need to make our way down to the second objective, even though we've already completed it. It's just a minor thing, but it's, yeah, it's something you can do. All that's left now is to actually get our way out of this second compound. That includes getting out the front door. Have to be very careful sometimes. Now when I first played this level I decided that it probably wasn't worth my time to go through the rest of the base. And uh, all I did was just backtrack the way I came in and that did me all, every single time. There was no need to do anything more. But for the sake of this LP we'll go through the long way. I'll have a brief look at the map to point some things out. We've got what appears to be a gate at the very top center of the base, but I don't think there's any way at all to actually open it. And the way we're actually going to be heading out is over to the top right where another one-way gate is. There's a closer look at the gate, there's no lock or anything nearby. And it's flanked by two watchtowers, so we won't be going anywhere near that. And now we finally get to kill those guys in the bunker. If you're unlucky, they can be facing in your direction whenever you come in through the door, and that makes it a hell of a lot harder to get rid of them. Got that two-story building ahead of us, but we'll go up the watchtower first and have a look around. Oh, it was you! I'm doing so many runs of these levels, I keep forgetting who I've killed and who I haven't. Time for a little bit of recon. Have a look in, and we've got, uh, we've got an active camera, and uh, behind it we've got a guy standing next to an alarm button, which I've never seen him hit. And we've got some machine guns at the window. We've got a guy patrolling too, and, and a gate down below, so let's... Oh. Luckily he didn't see us when he was standing in view of the camera, so we, yeah, we got lucky there. We'll make a quick detour off to this little garage and... Uh, God damn it! Uh, we'll, we'll worry about him in a minute. Inside there isn't really anything to see, there's not really much of a note, except for this truck. Which I think is parked a little bit too far back. I, I honestly don't know how they managed to close the shutter door. Um, I don't think there's enough room for it to turn there, but, oh well. Stop there! <clears throat> oh, come on. I was intending to just stay away from him and not have to worry about him, but my health is dwindling too much, so I think I, I don't think I can risk people being active and, and just shooting at me, from, even from any distance whatsoever. There, I think that got him. Okay, off to the gates. We've still got that guy hanging about on top of the camera. Sometimes he's standing over in the other corner get too close he can see us. So we still got some sniper ammo left, so we'll use that. If we start dancing in front of the camera, you can see it's another one with a really long range. We don't even have to get through the gate for it to be able to see us. Well, once again, we can snipe it. 
As for something that I find particularly interesting, you probably won't. We've got some thick snow outside this particular building. It acts much like gravel in that it makes people aware of your presence. We've gone and prepared, we've just blown them up as they came out the door. Of course, sometimes it, <laughs> if you're not prepared, it can kick you in the ass. Quick little noisy dance for effect. So let's try sneaking in and see what happens. Strange, I have the sneak key down and it still made a noise. Let's try that once again. We'll manage to get all the way up to the doorway this time, but as soon as we cross the threshold we'll make a noise again. So, what is actually happening here? Well, it all comes down to the player movement and how it actually handles a given maximum velocity. It appears that IGI works in a the similar way that Quake and Doom and all those sort of ones uh, operated, and that the forwards and sideways motions are two independent separate things. So, basically what we've got here is that we've got a set speed that we've got when we're sneaking. So let's just give that a number of, say, 40, and we've got a value that says if we move at greater than 50 on a given surface that it makes a noise. So you'd think, oh yeah, if we move at 40 then we'd be grand, but the problem is if we move straight forwards or straight sideways then we hit a maximum of 40, but if we move at a diagonal we end up with this result. This is something you'll see in older games where the movement vectors haven't been normalised, and this is generally why you'll see in some speedruns of old games that people will be moving at a diagonal in order to get things done quicker. So what we've got here is that even though the game, strictly speaking, thinks we're moving at a, at a sneaking speed, whenever we move at a diagonal, it puts us over that limit, and then we make a noise on the snow. Boring! Okay, moving on, we can go into the barracks room here and have a look around. The usual bunk beds, and we've got showers, and we've got a new fucking weapon! Double Uzi's motherfucker! We'll get to fire these babies off in a little minute. First, we're going to take a, um, an elevator ride up. Get off at the top of the lift, we see that we've got some, some vanishing lockers here. We've got these machine guns lined up along the windows, but I haven't actually seen anyone ever get onto them. I don't know if they're here just for show, or maybe I haven't actually managed to set up the conditions necessary for it, but there you go. Right, time to test these babies out. There we go. No, unfortunately, well, we're not going to be able to use them on that guy. Close range guys are already dead. So, just to show how these guns operate, here's an example of them being used. <laughs> that's pretty much all you're getting. There'll be more in a future level, but right now, that's your lot. We've killed everyone that we need to, so we can actually leave the compound now make our way down the lift, there's no bottom floor this time, and leave. Well, I say there's no bottom floor, but, well, there actually is. Reuse an old glitch and drop through the floor. <coughs> when we land down here, we're kind of skating under the floor slightly, we're not actually standing on the floor. You can see that this is indeed very cookie cutter level design, except this hasn't been populated yet. <coughs> There's nothing around, all the rooms are empty, and there's in fact no way to get back out. You can see up through the floor of the lift, but yeah, there's no way to get up there. Making our way out of the building, we can be as noisy as we like now. There's no one around to bother us. Off to the gate, but before we leave, as just a last thing, this is going right back to before we even assaulted this base. 
if we shoot the guy at the front checkpoint and he is seen by the camera, all those guys start running out from the, the barracks and also from the two-story base. And they take up positions all around the place and make things just generally more difficult. Quick look here to show that we can't get in from the other side. And we are done with this compound and we can move on. I promise, there won't be anything else. This has gone on long enough. It's a bit of a trek up to the third compound, so why don't we tell a joke? Did you hear about the circus fire? Yeah, it was intense. Alright then, there's time for another one. How do you keep an idiot in suspense? I'm sorry. Right, we're at the fi- <laughs> Okay, we're at the third compound. Let's uh, take a look at the map and see what we've got here. We've got two cameras. Right, that's one thing. We seem to have the entrance down at the bottom. There doesn't appear to be any other way inside. So, uh, let's get cracking. Oh god damn it, another barracks with Spetsnaz. I'm not taking any chances this time, I'm gonna try and draw them out. Here's what happened the last time I tried to play it normally. are shooting through the doors. It's about this point that I'm very painfully aware of just how little health I've got left. As soon as I poke my head up, I'm actually visible to three people. Well, actually make that two. I can see another one off in the distance. That's how I actually managed to get away and kill them all. Okay, that gives us plenty of room to work with. Just fire off a shot, get down before they start firing through the walls at me. Like that. And get them while they're in the waiting state. Ah, they're all dead. Okay. Can pick up some ammo if we really want to. And inside the barracks for our reward is some more shotgun ammo. Well... Normally you would probably expect to just avoid this barracks, but I haven't really found any real useful way of getting around without being spotted. Just once you open the gates, generally when you walk through they tend to get spooked by something. It's much easier to kill them in advance. Working our way inside the compound, we've got a bunch of containers and a warehouse over on one side. We've got a, a camera there guarding this gate. We're not going to be able to get through there. And oh, we got a guy. We'll go this way. Right here, we've got a another dead end. Creating our next little bit, we can see some wires coming out of that building. That's what the cable car is attached to. Well, I guess we're going inside this little building. Hopefully, we'll find some way of getting through. Nothing here yet, and oh, oh, camera computer, that's fine. Oh, shit. Oh, God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh, okay, get this done. Fall back. Oh, shit, I'm stuck. There we go. Well, there really was a reason for getting that computer. If we get to the doorway, we can see over there we've got the cameras off, but around the other side is another camera. If we had shot that guy through the window, the camera would have seen him. I think it's purposely set up that way. And there's a possibility he could have run to the outside of the window and, and then just kind of stood around there. So I had to get that camera off as soon as possible. A little bit of grenade launching acrobatics there and that's pretty much all of the enemies dead. All that's really left is a little bit of exploration just to fill in some blanks. Through the gate we've got some sort of little outhouse with some, I don't know, ammunition or explosives the warehouse and there is absolutely nothing inside. The containers are just sort of stacked heavily heavily, there's nothing really going on there. So we'll just make our way back to this building. 
again, has a switch on either side, so in terms of security, it's not very good, but it's there just for the camera to be able to pick you up. And the same goes for the door to this building, it's locked, so it's in, just in the right position for the camera to get you. Uh, once we're inside, we're almost done. If we go into this little fenced area where the cable car is, we can follow the cable coming off the top of the building. Looking on the map, if we actually know that's going to take ages to do, if we just use our binoculars and follow them all the way to the end, you can see it just stops in midair. Probably a good thing it doesn't go anywhere, otherwise you'd have assholes like me traipsing across an entire map just to look for things. Have a look in the cable car itself, there's nothing really anything happening there, it doesn't trigger anything when we go inside. That's because we haven't switched it on yet. Do that and Anya tells us to jump inside. If we came here without having switched on the cable car electricity, it, nothing would have happened. It's been a long, long map and I almost didn't make it several times, but we are finally finished and I will see you next time.